Shalom, shalom, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pulse of Israel here in our eternal and ancestral homeland, the land of Israel, in our eternal and undivided capital since King David's times, Jerusalem. Today, I'm going to be speaking with an old friend. I am blessed to call her a friend, Virag Gulash. From she's originally from Hungary, and uh, a world traveler does a lot, a lot of work in uh, in the space for standing up for truth for Israel, the Jewish people, and truth in general. Today she is in New York. She likes to live there and do a lot of good work there. And I'm going to be speaking to Virag about a demonstration she recently went to in Hungary. And you're going to ask, well, Avi, what, what are you talking about a demonstration in Hungary? What does that have to do with Judaism, Israel, the freedom-loving world? Well, wait till you hear what this is about. Because a former minister of the interior of Finland right now is under investigation for hate speech for quoting the Bible. And this demonstration that Virag went to in Hungary with other people was standing up for freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Because this case is highlighting that something is going very, very wrong in our freedom-loving world. Somehow the word freedom is being dropped in many of the countries we live in or grew up in where we were so proud to have freedom and democracies. So let us bring in Virag. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Good, good. It's still morning here. I'm a little jet lagged, but thank you for having me. As you know, we agreed on this time. So I'm happy to be here and, you know, happy to see you again. Well, it is always a pleasure seeing you. I look forward to seeing you in person. And in the meantime, tell us what what was this demonstration about and why did you attend? Yeah, so this actually, I haven't been attending any demonstrations in Hungary for, for ages. And this one, when I got to learn about it, I was like, okay, I need to be there. Even though it's not related to Jews and Israel, the specific niche that I'm working in. This is about a woman who you mentioned, you know, she's a former minister of interior in Finland. Her name is Faidi Razanen, and she is actually now under investigation for quoting something from the Bible. So when you understand that someone is facing a possible two-year jail because she quoted from the Bible, you should have red flags all around. And it doesn't even matter whether you agree with her subjectively on, on that matter that she was tweeting about or not this should be a red flag because today there are so many hate speech related to it so many let's stay with the jews you know so much jew hatred going around you can find videos literally circulating on social media as to how to kill a jew how to stab a jew and those people just run away without any consequences but when someone quotes from the bible in 2020 that happened there or 2021 you can go to jail Come on, that really should say stop, enough. From what I understood and from, from your post about it, one, it is crazy that someone, forget about the fact that she used to be a minister, right? A government minister, but anyone can be prosecuted and investigated for quoting the Bible. But two, she was quoted the Bible because, as I, I read from your post, she was voicing her opposition to a decision made by her church regarding gender fluid issues. So it seems yeah. like we're not talking about freedom here. We're talking about an ideological agenda that government is trying to enforce by prosecuting and investigating you if you voice an opinion that goes against their agenda. Am, am I off on that? And no, you're totally right. And that's a sad story. So basically, she responded to her own church, which is a Lutheranian church. So she's not Catholic. She belongs to the Lutheranian church. And she is saying that a man can be a father and a mother can only be a woman. And basically, she quoted from the Bible that is supporting this idea. How crazy is that, right? So that's what I'm saying. You can disagree with her. You can have a very different point of view on the LGBTQ plus communities. That's, that's you know, everybody's subjective decision. But she quoted something from the Bible that underlines the fact that originally, you know, there is a male and there is a female. And for that, someone can face jail time. That is absolutely crazy. So you're not off from that. 
that's what happened. And for me, and also in the demonstration, we had over 3,000 people. And not everybody is purely Bible-loving person who was there. It's a simple common sense. Because today, it's quoting from the Bible. Tomorrow, it's your other manners that you said good morning instead of, you know, I don't know what. So it's dangerous because it's freedom of speech, freedom of religion that is at stake. And I was really welcoming actually how the community that I am writing towards to, which is the Jewish community, actually responded to this post. I thought that it's going to be ignored or people won't really enjoy this post in the good sense. But thankfully, most of them realized that this is also a Jewish issue. So, you know, we often talk about how what starts with the Jews doesn't stop with the Jews. The same applies here. What starts with the Christians also won't stop there. And this Bible, they didn't say, you know, which part of the Bible, your part or my part. So this is something that maybe next time you are, you, you quote something from your part of the Bible and you're going to be facing jail. So that is why it's extremely dangerous. Did we lose each other? So I don't know if we lost Abby or he lost me, but something did happen. I see on Facebook that I'm still live and Avi has gone missing. So hi, Avi. I took over your show. Oh, Virag, if anyone can take over my show, I give you permission. You are <laughs> amazing. I just that we are still live on Facebook. So I was like, okay. So did you, did you hear the last part of what I said, you know, or not? So basically I just said, maybe tomorrow you're going to quote from your part of the Bible and you can go to jail. So this is not so lightly uh, a Christian issue and you know we always say that what starts with the Jews doesn't stop with the Jews the same applies here what starts with the Christians in this manner won't stop there and this is really going further than than anyone could have imagined in the in the craziest dreams of ours that you can face jail time for quoting from the Bible yeah it's absolutely horrific here you're talking about a book again whether someone's religious or not this is like the most popular book of humanity whether it's the jews whether it's the christians whether it's the muslims right. they also believe in in the in in, in 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 the bible even if they also continued in writing their own stuff afterwards right. how can you prosecute mm. someone for quoting the bible but again we see that on the one hand it's on the one hand it's going after religion but it's not about going after religion it's about their ideological agenda like like you were is. talking about and it shouldn't make it a is. difference we isn't tolerance tolerance is about tolerating other people's opinions that's what the left always preached for years right they said we're liberal they only we're tolerate tolerant. as long as you know as long as it fits their, fits their agenda. And I, I really hate this left and right and left and right. But as you said, this is really not about the Bible here. This is about pushing an agenda further that there is an LGBTQ plus community and you just need to love the idea of, of what they stand for. Otherwise, you should go to jail. And that is not tolerance, you know, so... I personally let them leave, but let me leave the way I want. And if they can express their views on, on for example, you know, the pride marches, then let that uh, minister, for, for, former minister, express her views on a Twitter post. That is tolerance. That is freedom of speech. So the moment one can do what, she, what they want to do, but the other part can't, that's censorship, that's discrimination, that goes against everything that actually our world should stand for. And let me trigger you even further and the people who listen here, where I totally lost with this case is when in Finland, an attorney general said 
that the Bible is actually like the Mein Kampf of Hitler. So he had the audacity to compare Mein Kampf and the Bible. So there is something really, really wrong at the core foundation of this whole debate. No, that's a very good, that's a very, very good point. Um, I, I'm sorry for saying thank you for triggering me with that information, but it's critical information to know. But it, it actually fits in with something I've been talking about for years where the, the process, the cultural war, the cultural changes process we're witnessing is ultimately a battle of mankind against God, meaning those in mankind who are trying to replace God and throw out God, which in a sense is against anyone who believes in God, whatever religion or whatever people that is. As if mankind, we are the, forget about the fact that God created you, right? There had to be a first man, whether you believe that we came from the monkeys or not, there had to be a first something, right? We didn't come out of air. So those of us who believe understand that something is some godly power. But yet here we have mankind thinking, oh, forget about God. Forget about that there's some other power out there that's helping run, ran, created the world, running the world. No, 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 we're better. We're man. We're smarter. We are the the, the best beings that, that exist. And now we're going against to throw away God entirely. As Not fun. Yes, was. totally. And again, you know, it has this religious angle, but those people who are not religious should also see the danger in this. Just as I said, today is the Bible, tomorrow it's maybe the next book that you're reading. And, and it's just absolutely crazy. And there was actually one pamphlet on the demonstration that says, you know, here are the countries or empires where the Bible has been burned. And it was the Soviet Union, you know, back then the Roman Empire. So basically all those very toxic environment that you would hope that by 2022, we overcame and we became better people. But apparently history is once again repeating itself. And silence is compliance, such as, you know, when you see anti-Semitism rising in New York, it's absolutely crazy what's happening now. Every weekend Jews are being attacked. And people are silent, including the Jewish community. Sadly, they are still not angry enough. On the other hand, also here, silence is compliance. Because also back then, nobody assumed that Hitler will go as evil as he went. So today, just assuming, oh, it's just another thing and we just shred our shoulders, this is a very dangerous and short-sighted policy. And this is extremely warming my heart that basically in Hungary, we had this demonstration, even though the situation and the whole... Uh, low case or the situation like really is in Finland because what we understand that it's Finland but it's way more universal than that today it's Finland tomorrow it can be Hungary no you make you make very very good points and I guess I'll end with this 100% what you said like it starts with going after religion or going after the bible but then it goes to everything but people have to understand at least I, this is my understanding and I think I'm on the right track Going after God and getting rid of God basically takes away or, or pulls the rug out of the fundamental right of man to be free. Because who gave us our freedoms but God? And when man is trying to get rid of God and saying, no, I'm in charge. Well, if man is in charge and greater than God because God doesn't exist or God is as bad as Hitler, right? That means man could take away fellow man's freedoms. Exactly. Exactly. It's super dangerous. And I know that you need to go and you wanted to close with that. I'm going to close with an even harsher truth because we are talking primarily to Jewish audience here. When I left the demonstration, I couldn't stop thinking about one thing. How is it possible that within one week, two journalist people in Hungary could achieve a demonstration with over 3,000 of people without any big budget and anything, just a Facebook event. And the, the situation, again, as I say, it's not even in Hungary, but in Finland. Whereas in New York, we have one and a half million Jews living here. We are facing an extremely increasing level of anti-Semitism. And whenever there is an action to be taken or go to demonstrate, we barely can have 50 Jews come together. What does it take for the Jewish community to be able to mobilize itself and say enough is enough? Why is it 
and I, I'm really, really for years, and I'm not alone with this, trying to find the reason why is it so hard to mobilize the Jewish community, whereas the Black community in New York, for example, can mobilize within seconds. We know that the Arabs can mobilize in seconds. Apparently, we in Hungary, with conservative you know, ideology, could mobilize in seconds. What does it take for the Jewish people to stand up for themselves and say what, what's happening in the U.S. now in terms of Jew hatred is, is above our, or beyond our threshold, and we don't tolerate anymore. So I want to finish with that because it is really a thought for, for the Jewish community to think about it. That's a very, very, very poignant and deep point. We can have a show just on that issue. Uh, without going too deep into it, it's basically because after thousands of years of persecution, Jews do not want to deal with us being persecuted. We j Jews just want to fit in. Jews just want to live life and to put Jews in the position. And every day it's a different issue. And every day it's, it's, it's a different Jew hatred coming from a different direction. Well, on the one hand, Jews are tired. Like I'm talking in terms of thousands of years tired. I'm not talking about day-to-day -day tired, right? On the other hand, they're trying to do their, their, their life and they, and they just want to live their life. So it's hard to wake up that passion within your regular Joe Schmo Jew to hit the streets and stand up for himself because they want, not that they want to deny it, but they don't want to acknowledge of how bad of a problem it is. Because the I second they do that. acknowledge how bad of a problem it is, they have a huge wake up, right. wake up call to re-understand reality around them yeah. in total. Yeah, but I, I hear not, you. What? No, I thank just, you, I just yeah. want to say thank you. Thank you for your for your voice. Thank you for your persona. Thank you for everything you do, whether for Israel, whether for the Jewish people, whether standing up for so many important truths and freedoms that so many other people are, are, are not standing up for, Jew and non-Jew alike. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud to call you a friend and thank you very thank much. You, Thank you so much. And just one big shout out to the people who actually organized this demonstration. And you know them in person, actually. You know, the journalists from Hatek, the Polifai brothers, sisters. So, yes. yeah, really huge shout out to everyone who is actually able to dedicate time to, to our future. Because it's Amazing. Really and thank you for telling me that because I did not know that. So thank you, Virag. Tadaraba. Enjoy the rest of your day. Folks, how many, how many non-Jewish Hungarians do you know who talk Hebrew so perfectly like Virag? So I hope this was enlightening to all of you to uh, to hear Virag's perspective and that she was at the rally, what this rally was about. And it's something that touches all of us, Jew and non-Jew alike, as Virag uh, uh, explained so eloquently herself. Signing off for another episode of The Pulse of Israel here in our eternal and ancestral homeland, Israel, in our eternal and undivided capital since King David's time, Jerusalem. Thanks for watching, everyone. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.